Hey, welcome back everybody. This video, we're gonna to touch on numbers just a little bit more and then we're gonna be moving on to something else. So this video, I wanted to talk about the math object. Well, if you do math dot, you're going to get access to a lot of methods. Now these are all static methods, so you don't have to make an instance of the math class. So these can be used for more complex math and we're just gonna go through some of these. We're not gonna get into like the sine and cosine stuff. If you need that, you can look into that and see how to use them. I'm just going to be going through some very simple ones that you'll probably see more often. Unless you're doing like computational stuff, but we're not doing that here. <laughs> now if you guys want to help me out, please check out the sponsor Monday.com. Monday.com is a project management system that can help you keep track of the work you have ahead of you. Now I use a project management system at work and it's not Monday.com and it's, it's hideous. <laughs> it's hard to look at. Monday.com is unique because it has one of the most beautiful user interfaces. It's mobile friendly, very easy to use, and organizes your work in a very easy to consume way. So if you're not using monday.com, shame on you. <laughs> Check them out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a double variable and give it a value. Now inside of the math class, there's going to be a round function, capital R. The difference between a method and a function, by the way, is a function is the same thing as a method, it just stands by itself, it's not attached to a class. So since these functions are attached to the math class, they're known as methods. You'll often hear the term function used instead of method. It's probably more technically correct to say method, but it's not terribly wrong to say function either. So we're gonna go with the round method. <laughs> and what you do is you pass in a value here. And if you wanna see again what this method does, you can hold control shift and hit space. If you can't remember that keyword, you can just retype the parentheses, it'll pop up. So what this does is it will round to the nearest integral value. And the return type is right there, decimal. So the data type it returns is still a decimal, but it's not going to have any data after the dot. So it'll just be a zero. So we're just gonna write this out and then come down here and say dot net run, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Make sure you save. <laughs> I didn't save and I was like, what's going on? Um, you can see the value here is 50. The reason it gives 50 and not 51 is because the round method uses something called banker's rounding. And what this will do is it'll look at the last number here and it will round to the nearest even number. So the closest even numbers are 50 and 52. 50 is closer, so it's gonna go to 50. If you wanna change that, you can. This can take extra arguments if you put a comma. The next is the number of decimal places to show after, so you could put a zero if you wanted. And then the next thing is if you want to use midpoint rounding, which is the opposite of banker's rounding. So if you want to do that, just say midpoint rounding dot away from zero. Two even is the banker's version. Away from zero is what we're typically used to from math class. So you save that, give that a run, and you can see now we get 51, which is probably what you were expecting. Instead of using one of these rounding techniques, you may want to always round up or always round down. So even if this was 50.9, for example, you still might want it to be 50. There is a method for going down and there's a method for going up. So we can get rid of this round method. If we wanna go down, we say floor, throw an X. You can see that will give us 50. If we want to go up, we just say ceiling, like so. And that will give us 51. An alternative, rather than moving this up or down, you might just want to chop off the value, which is essentially the same as floor, but you may also see truncate. And this is just going to sever off everything after the decimal. And you can see this returns 50. So those are some common methods you're going to see. And then the other ones I wanted to talk about are min and max. Min allows us to pass in two numbers and it'll give us the smallest of the two. So that's the signature here, it returns the smaller of two. And there are overloads, so you can see from these numbers here. So this one here says two 8-bit unsigned integers, but that's not the only thing it does. You can basically throw in anything here. So for example, if we had two variables, and what we do is we throw in y and we throw in x, when we run this, you can see we get the value 50.9, which is the smaller of the two. There is also max, which works in a similar way. It just gives us the larger version, 300. Awesome, so that might come in handy if you're doing some kind of algorithm where you have to sort numbers by size. Very small piece, but might come in very handy. If you were to have to do this yourself, you'd have to do some if statements and do some comparison to see which one was larger. This will definitely save you some time. Now that's basically all I wanted to show you, but I do have a, just a bonus one here that you might see, and that is abs, which is what I have, of course. 
And what you do with this is you just pass in a number and it's going to give you the positive version of whatever that number is. So if you pass in a number that's positive already, nothing's going to happen. You can see we get 50.9, but if let's say X is negative and we run it, we're still going to get that same value right there. There's a related method which is sine, and this is actually going to return a number that represents whether a number is positive or negative. So you could use this if you're testing to see if something's positive, negative, or even zero. So when we run this now, we get the value negative one, which is negative. If it's zero, we should get zero right there. And then lastly, if it's a positive number, such as y, which is 300, we get one. That's all I'm gonna be covering in this video, but there are lots of other methods, so if you wanna see them, you can hit the dot after math. You can see there's all kinds of those trigonometry things that I still don't know. <laughs> there's exponent, logarithms, powers, square root, that might come in handy. Definitely one you might wanna familiarize yourself with. And that's basically all the important ones. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys, getting you caught up with the math class and how to use it. In the next video, we're gonna be moving on to some new stuff, so hopefully you guys have been enjoying this series. Please be sure to leave me a comment letting me know if you guys have any questions or anything you'd like to see in this series. Please be sure to subscribe, guys. I'll see you in the next video.